I'm Pastor Gary Brown from Victory Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas. My dad was a pastor before me, and we moved to Fort Smith when I was age 10. When I was age 21, I became youth pastor at the church, and I've been on the pastoral staff now for 50 years. Actually, we have a, a new senior pastor now, and I'm just kind of helping out at this point. In 2004, I had a very unusual experience, the most unusual of my life. I've been blessed with a lot of visitations and visions and dreams. This surpassed anything I've ever known. I woke up on a Saturday morning. We'd just come back from a conference in Florida. I woke up on a Saturday morning at 5 a.m. I went to the sofa just to spend some time with God. And I began to sense his presence very, very strong. And I thought, maybe I'm getting some more notes for my sermon tomorrow. So I grabbed a pad and paper, or, or a pad and pen, and, and was going to write down those notes. But then I realized that's not what was going on. And I just kept sensing the growing presence of God. And within a few minutes, I went to the floor and got on my face before God. And with another few minutes, I realized that my spirit was leaving my body. And I'd only had this happen exactly that way one other time when I was 14 years old, when I sensed that my spirit left my body. I sensed that happen, and I knew then what it was to be absent from the body and present with the Lord because I was absolutely in the presence of God. For five hours, I spent time in heaven. And I spent time in the presence of God. In this instance, it was restricted strictly to the presence of God because God wanted me to see that He is what makes heaven, heaven. Now, I've had visitations where I saw things in heaven. I've visited heaven and in three occasions I've gone to something they call the Great Library and there's a, a great hourglass there and the silver, not sand, but the silver that comes through that is quite full on the bottom and not very full on the top. I think we're about done. I think we're about to see Jesus come soon. Well, in this experience, the presence of God was amazing. I became detached from everything of earth. As a matter of fact, I said to God, I said, if this is what it's like to be in your presence for eternity, you can go ahead and take me now and not send me back. I know that sounds amusing because I don't have to give God permission to take me, right? But the, the odd thing is that I was so detached. I, I love my family, and yet the presence of God, maybe this will help you see how amazing the presence is. The presence of God in heaven is so magnified that we detach from everything of earth. If you've ever wondered if your loved ones that have gone to heaven miss you, they don't. Don't feel bad about that. They'll look forward to seeing you. They'll love seeing you when you get there, when you graduate, but they don't miss you because the presence of God is so amazing. One of the most frustrating things about this is explaining how amazing. I knew immediately what Isaiah felt when he said, I'm undone. And I understood why the angels sing holy, holy, holy around the throne. The presence of God is incredible. It's, it's magnified a million times what you've ever experienced here on earth of the presence of God. I've experienced some amazing times of God's refreshing and presence in my life. And maybe you have too, but I'm telling you in heaven, it's a million times more. It's so much larger, so magnified, that it's hard for us to comprehend in our minds. You feel an absolute, absolute acceptance. You know, I'd often thought of when I go into the presence of God after I graduate into heaven, that there might be a, a, a kind of an unworthy feeling, but it's not that at all. It's very humbling, but you don't feel unworthy. God makes you feel so loved so accepted. Why do we not feel unworthy? Because of Jesus. Because Jesus has taken our unworthiness and counted it as, as qualification for His mercy. The Messiah died on that cross 
for you and me. So I knew the presence of God was so welcoming, so warm, so loving, and I felt so accepted and secure. Everything in heaven, everything in his presence is based in love. It's a loved based place and the security and the joy and the peace was magnified beyond anything that's imaginable to the human mind. This lasted for five hours. At the end of that five hours, then came the afterglow. It was so amazing, just so amazing to have the afterglow of God in this experience in my life. The next morning at church, I told of this experience and the altars were full of people who were seeking a closer relationship with God. I basked in this afterglow until Monday night, until Monday night, at Monday night at midnight, I was in worship, I was praising God. And at midnight, I felt like the presence of God in all of his glory was vacuumed out the top of my head and suddenly I was in hell. The devil immediately walked up to me, this grotesque figure. He stunk. He reached out to me and he reached to my lips and he did like this and he threw that on the ground and he stomped on it. And they were the praises that I'd been speaking the last few days about my experience and about the presence of God. And he said, where's your God now? And he began to shoot incredible accusations at me and condemnations. You see, everything in hell is based in fear. And the, the accusations came like shotgun pellets. The condemnations came so fast. I was accused of every sin I'd ever done that had been forgiven and every sin that i had had in a vain imagination but hadn't acted on. I was accused of everything that I never thought about doing. He just kept accusing and accusing. Demons joined him. They were screeching and mocking. And then I heard the cry of, cries of millions of the lost, of the people that were there. Hell is so lonely. Hell is so empty. And you experience things on multiple levels. Fear has torment. And there was torment there. Everything that you feel is based in fear. For instance, you, fear, you feel much grace, uh, uh, grief, I should say. You feel much grief, no grace. You feel absolute grief. You feel uh, anxiety. Uh, you're terrified that your loved ones will end up in hell. Uh, if you've ever had a panic attack, maybe a moment of fight or flight uh, experience or a panic attack that just came on you, it's a million times worse, that, worse than that, but it never ends. It just keeps happening on and on and on. Now, I did not experience fire. I didn't see fire. Now, I'm not saying there's not fire there. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is that fire would have been preferred to the hopelessness of hell. There is no hope. Here, if we feel hopeless, we have a bad day or a bad week, we're in a tough circumstance, we can go to a friend and vent. We can go to a, a Christian friend and they'll pray for us. We can turn to Jesus. We can ask God for his help and he'll give it because he never leaves us or forsakes us. But in hell, there's nowhere to turn. And I would say I would define hell by the word hopelessness. There's absolute hopelessness. This went on for five hours and then it, it ended. But there was an aftermath and it was like I enjoyed the afterglow of God's presence. There was a bitterness and it was tough. Um, it went on for a day. And at the end of the next day, at, mid, at, mid, at uh, midnight, I was still awake and still struggling with this. I finally fell asleep about 3 a.m. And then I woke up and I realized there was a shift. And I got a piece of paper and a pencil. And I wrote down, greater is he that is in me 
than he that is in the world. And I wrote down, resist the devil and he will flee. And I felt I was writing against some unseen force. And when I had written that, I looked up and there was a mist above me. It was the glory and presence of God. It came in through my face and came down into me. I was so thankful. The Lord did a couple of things through a couple of friends to strengthen me and encourage me, a word of knowledge and a prayer. And then everything changed. Everything changed. Unusual circumstances began to happen. In one occasion, I was sitting outside of a Hallmark store waiting on my wife. And a person came out with three children in the store next to Hallmark. And she was loading her children in the car. And the Spirit of God said, compliment the children. I complimented the children. She thanked me. She walked around the front of her car. Kids couldn't hear at that point. And the, the Spirit said, ask if all three of the children are from different fathers. I said, what? He said, just ask. And so I asked her, I said, are all three of the children from different fathers? She said, yes, and I'm carrying a child now. And that child's from a fourth father. And he too has left me. And I said, ma'am, you fall in love easily, don't you? She said, way too easily. And I said, can I tell you about, about a man who will love you and who will never leave you or forsake you? And she said, oh, yes. And I shared the gospel with her. I told her about Jesus, our Messiah, how he died on the cross for her. And within a moment, just a moment or two, she made my open window her altar and she gave her heart to the Lord. And as she was leaving a few minutes later after we'd visited a bit, she looked back and she said, you know what's real, really weird? We went to the wrong store today. We just went in that store, came back out and got in our car because we realized we were in the wrong place. And I said, you weren't in the wrong place. She said, I know I was in the right place place today. On another occasion, I went uh, to see uh, my dad in the hospital. As I came out of the hospital, it was very late at night, and uh, I passed a lady who was in a wheelchair. She'd gone outside to smoke, and I walked past her, and I got to my car almost, and the Lord said, she's going to die in two weeks. Will you let her go to hell? I said, oh no. And I went back and I said, ma'am, the Lord told me that you're dying. And she said, that is true. She said, I have only a few months to live. Now I knew it'd be two weeks by the spirit. But I didn't say that. I just said, I wonder if you're prepared to die. And she said, oh yeah, I'm tired of life. I'm tired, I'm ready to get out of here. I said, no, I mean, are you prepared in Jesus? Do you know Jesus? And she said, you know, I, I went to church with my grandmother when I was a little girl and I heard them talk about Jesus. And I said, let me tell you about Jesus. And in just a moment, this lady whose legs were amputated and one arm was amputated and she was near death, accepted Jesus as her savior. You see, there are many other stories that I could share if we had time like this. The important thing is God is for you. He was thinking about that lady and her children. He was thinking about the woman and he had me there just at the right time for both of them, the lady in the wheelchair and the lady outside of Hallmark. And he's thinking about you and he's for you. God said he has a plan for you that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He said he'd never harm you. And he said he'd never leave you or forsake you. Just receive him into your life right now. If you don't know him as your Messiah and Lord, just say, come into my life. Forgive me of every sin and set me on a path of life, a life that I can find in the scriptures and then begin to walk with him. The Holy Spirit will help you do that. If you're a believer, but you need to know God more, you need a closer relationship with him, get yoked to Jesus and soak in his presence. You'll never regret it because he's a rewarder of all those who diligently seek him.